If you use Arch Linux, then I'm sure you use the AUR or the Arch user repository. It is actually a big reason why a lot of people choose Arch Linux. And if you're like me, then one of the first things you did when you installed Arch Linux is download a AUR helper like Yay or Paru. Those are a couple of the popular ones right now. And then just install anything that you could ever possibly want. But what you might not know is that when you use the AUR, what you're basically doing is you're downloading scripts from random people on the internet. So of course the AUR is used to download packages that are not in the official repository. And these packages are all uploaded just by random users. And so if you've ever been on the Arch Wiki under the Arch user repository page, they even have a giant scary red box right here that says AUR packages are user produced content. Any use of the provided files is at your own risk. So you do need to be aware of this whenever you're downloading from the Arch user repository. Because if you're just using random scripts that you get from people online, well, I'm sure you can imagine what could happen. So what could happen is somebody just uploads a malicious script to the AUR, and that is something that has happened before. There was an incident a few years ago where somebody uploaded a script that basically harvested details of your operating system for some nefarious purpose, I guess. But even if it's not somebody writing malicious code to install malware onto your system, it could just be that they don't know how to write scripts and they put in some error that could mess up your system. So another example would be Steam actually released a script that would remove the user's home file if they were using Linux. And it wasn't that Valve was trying to be evil with this, it's just that somebody released a really badly written rm-rf command that in a lot of cases would just remove your entire home directory. So those are the kinds of things that you need to worry about if you are just installing random scripts. And so in this video, I'm going to go over how you can vet these scripts and protect yourself from running any dangerous code that might be inside these scripts. And all that you really need to do is you just need to read the scripts that you're installing. So first off, what exactly are we installing? Well, if you're using a AUR helper like Yay or Paru, all that they're really doing under the hood, let's go to my Paru directory. All they're really doing is cloning a git repository, maybe a git repository like this. And there's going to be a few files in here. Most importantly, the package build. And this is basically the installer script. And so let's look at this installer script and see what it's doing. And this is for pfetch, which is just one of these tools that pops open a little system information script like this. But if we just look in here, if you know some basics about shell scripting, then all of this should make sense to you. So this is just declaring some variables like the package name and the package version. And you do want to check the source here because this is where it's downloading the package from. So if we read through this right here, we can see that it's pulling in from the URL variable, which is going to be this up here, which is the GitHub for this project. And so with this source variable, you do just want to confirm that it is pulling in from a source that you trust like the project's official website or the project's official GitHub. And once it has downloaded the application, all it's doing here is installing it with the install command. And in case you don't know what some of these commands do, what you can do is you can just look them up. So if I don't know what install does, I can just run man install and just learn. So install basically just copies files and sets attributes. And you can read a little bit more here if you would like. But what this command is doing is it's basically just copying these files into locations where they will be executable. And it's just setting the permissions for it. It is setting this to be executable, which you can see with dash M option. It is setting the permissions like chmod. And then it's just doing the same for the license. So that is a very basic example of what one of these AUR scripts actually does. And so once you read through this, then you can see that there's nothing actually to worry about. This all looks fine, so we can run this. But you're probably not manually installing these from the AUR. You're probably using uh, AUR helper. And that is why I actually recommend using Paru. So if I run something like Paru, and let's install some other random fetch utility. Let's grab this. And what Paru is going to do, if you just download some random script off of the AUR, it will ask you to review it. And you can't actually skip this step, which I like. A lot of other popular ones like Yay, they allow you to actually skip this step. But this forces you to open up the package build right here. And so now we can see this is doing basically the same as the other script. So that all looks good. And if there are any other files besides just the package build, sometimes there is an install script as well. It will display all of that so you can look over everything. 
And so it's usually going to be a little bit more complicated than this. This is just a very basic example. But only once you have reviewed this, then it will prompt you to proceed with the installation. So I do highly encourage you to read through all of this. And so let's go over another example that might be a little bit more complicated. Let's say we want to install VS Code EM-bin. It will ask us to review here. And we can check over this the same as we did the other one. All of these variables look fine. There's nothing crazy happening here. And it's downloading it from the official VS Code EM repository. That all looks good. And like the other one, it is just running a few steps here to install all of these. It is copying a few files and symlinking a few others. So this all looks pretty obvious. There's even a comment here explaining what this is doing just to make things a little bit easier for you. And so if you just take maybe a minute max of your time to read over everything before you actually install anything, it's just an extra layer of security so you don't have to worry. Now let's be honest, there isn't a high chance that this is going to have malicious code in it, especially if this is a popular package that a lot of people already install. Maybe for some more obscure package that not many people download, you have to be a little bit more vigilant. But especially on these popular packages, there are trusted users on the Arch user repository, which basically act as moderators. And if somebody sees something fishy, then they will take it down very quickly. So I gave the example of some malware being uploaded to the AUR in the past, and it was actually caught very quickly. I think it was only up for about an hour before it actually got caught. So the chance that you do download malware or even something that could break your system is pretty low, but I still think that it is worth checking all of your package builds. It doesn't take very much time at all. And if you don't know how to look through this, then just learn how to do it. So you are on Arch Linux. You are expected to know what you're doing. There is a reason why Arch Linux is more targeted towards more advanced users and not beginner users. So in my opinion, you really don't have many excuses for not reading through these. And plus, you only have to look through these long package builds the first time you really install these. And on updates, you don't have to worry about this as much. And that's because whenever a package is updated, the entire script doesn't really change. It's usually only a couple of small changes. And if you're using an AUR helper like Paru, it will display something like this to you. It will just show you the diffs or the differences between this version and the last. Not going to show you the entire package build. And so we can see the only differences here are this package rel or basically the version. So this is the third release. And the only other difference is that they have a new maintainer for it now, which doesn't really matter at all. But most of the time it's just going to be some very small update like this, like just changing the version number because that's probably all the update is, just a new version. And so you can very quickly just skim through the diffs. You don't have to read the entire package build like you would when you're just installing it for the first time. But I also do want to show you what you might want to watch out for when you are reading these package builds. So you might be thinking, what exactly are you looking for? And I can show you that by actually showing you the malicious code that was uploaded to the AUR before. So I have it here as a cool little script called malware. And so what this package build was basically doing, so we can scroll down here and see if we see anything weird. But what looks a little bit weird here is this part right here, where it is bringing some script in from the internet with curl or wget. And it's doing this from this weird looking URL. And so what you definitely want to look for is some suspicious looking lines like this, where it's bringing in some weird looking script from some weird looking URL. And then of course it's actually putting this onto your system like this. So you really want to look out for weird commands like this, like curl or wget or rm, where it can make some real damage to your system if you don't know what they're doing. So definitely verify that you know what these commands are doing if you see something weird. And just in case you were curious what this U script was doing is it was sending a whole bunch of your machine data. It was sending it to a paste bin. And the person who actually put this together didn't actually know what they were doing because they put their private API key right here in public. And what happened is it never actually even got uploaded to Pastebin. So because they wrote this part wrong, it never actually uploaded to the server and the, all the data just stayed on your local machine. So nothing bad actually happened from this. But if they were a little bit smarter in writing their script, then it actually would have. And that's why you want to be careful and check your package builds just so you don't run into something like this. And just as a general rule of thumb, besides all of this, I would just recommend keeping AUR packages on your system to a minimum. Don't just be installing tons of different AUR packages that you don't really need. 
It's just the less things to worry about, the easier it's going to be on you. And so I generally don't install anything from the AUR unless I really need it. And if you're not using something anymore, just uninstall it. And will doing all of this every time completely protect you from every possible malware? Obviously not, but this is just an extra step of security that you can take. And I just want to get you in the mindset of not necessarily trusting everything that you get from the AUR. So I recommend installing Paru instead of Yay or something else because it forces you to check the package builds and all of the different files every time. And don't make the noob mistake that I made for a long time where you just blindly install everything. And that's the thing, unfortunately, about a lot of these AUR helpers like Yay. They do make it a little bit too convenient and easy to just install anything from the AUR. And that's why a lot of people just blindly install. And this might sound like common knowledge to a lot of you, but... There are actually a lot of people, myself included, that didn't know this for a while. Like, for example, there's this guy on Reddit who said that every time he tries to download a package with Paru, he just gets a bunch of weird text like this, which, of course, is the package build if he had actually taken the time to learn about this. And you would think that after posting this on Reddit, he would learn his lesson and somebody would tell him that you have to read all the package builds instead of just skipping over them like he normally would. And somebody did actually tell him but he did not see this comment. He only saw this one where they say, oh, you can just press Q to skip it. And of course he says, thank you, kind stranger. Now he knows that he can skip all of them exactly the same as he was before. So don't be like this guy, read your package builds. And hopefully now you can be a little bit safer whenever you're running random scripts off the internet.